All right, hello and welcome back to Ashback Cats. Let's play that. Now you see those sparkles kind of floating down in the background. Did you notice that on the startup, when it was all zeros, when it was all zeros, that you could actually see all the sparkles coming down? So this is a Mago. Let's give it a go. And um, well, okay. Let's talk about the controls. Up, down, left, right, shoot, B, C. Now, okay. So we're just shooting. Now, uh, I bring up those controls just to give a contrast to what the controls could be. The controls could be a trackpad. Now, why why would I say a trackpad for a game such as this? I'm not entirely sure. Now, what's kind of interesting, though, is that it's structured a little bit like a shoot 'em up Like, every now and again, you'll shoot one of the mushroom- I'm- I'm sorry, imagination plants. And then you'll have enemies come down at you like this is Galaga or something. Now, they seem to mysteriously kill you. Maybe they're shooting at you or something. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so I've been quiet long enough. This game is centipede with shoot 'em up elements added. However, there is one notable change, and I did bring up the controls for a reason. The controls are actually kind of sensible now. Now, back in the past, centipede used a trackball, and like... That was fun because you could move across the screen literally as fast as you could move the trackball, but there's such a thing as too fast, and you could certainly move that too fast. Although speaking of a fun interface control option that's sort of like that, have you ever played Space Invaders Extreme for the Nintendo DS? Uh, that had a special optional $40, I might add, paddle controller that you could use to move left and right as fast as possible. And if you wanted to set any sweet high score, why are Jeez, they keep ambushing me from behind. That's that's pretty cheap. And there's no continue function. But again, there was no continue function in Centipede, so I'm not actually all that surprised. Well, at least the name entry screen works normally. I mean, you can hear me kind of fight against it. It feels like your cursor moves a little bit too slowly. Space, the limitless unknown dimension awaiting the advent of mankind. That's right. We are in space. We're totally not inside of a tree. Or, if we are in a tree, we are in a space tree. Because this is certainly not centipede. And they want you to know that. That being said, this does offer some advantages, I guess, over Centipede. I mean, I will say that, like, there are a lot of cheap deaths. And I mean, Centipede, like, yeah, you died a lot, it was a hard game, but I kind of feel like they were a bit more upfront about it. They weren't necessarily more fair, because I'm pretty sure in Centipede, like, the enemies that came at you moved at, like, the speed of light. Now, technically, you too could move at the speed of light because of the trackball controller, but really, you kind of couldn't. And so, well, okay, you could move at the speed of light, but your human reflexes, your mere human body, could not keep up with that. And so, you, you would have to kind of react really fast. This game, the enemies come at you slower, which I appreciate, but then they, they seem to weirdly explode and make random danger zones, and that I do not appreciate. Or maybe they warp in, but if they warp in where you are, then you just die, and that's... That's not appreciated. That's like a little too cheap, you know? Well, I guess the question is, how do you how do you want your game to be cheap? Do you want your game to be like unpredictable cheap? Or do you want your game to be like fast reflexes cheap? And uh, I mean, there's no one right answer. At least that's what the makers of Imago were uh, betting on when they made this game. Uh, one thing that's kind of nice though, is it doesn't seem like the mushrooms can be made inside of your little play area. Well, actually, that's kind of interesting. Um, in Centipede, like, the Centipede itself makes mushrooms in a process that's, quite frankly, a little bit baffling and never, never explained, and for good reason, too, because I don't, I don't think centipedes make mushrooms. But, uh, oh no, never mind. As you shoot them, you do kind of turn them into mushrooms. This is the most confusing amalgamation of Galaga and centipedes I've ever played. Now, Galaga I like, Centipedes I don't, so this game, well, quite naturally, I half like it and half don't. Alright, all I'm willing to admit, as you see the enemies coming at you a little more, you do get more used to their patterns, and it does, all in all, feel a bit less cheap. 
Actually, yeah, there's there's a surprising amount of enemy variation. I mean, it's not something you'd say about a centipede game, because, like, centipede game, it's pretty much just centipedes, and then, like, various bug creatures, which, actually, yeah, now that I think about it, bugs are not really my forte. I don't like them. So, to move away from the bug theme, however tangential- Oh! Oh, I had another life. Oh, maybe they killed my second fighter, but not my primary fighter. But, uh, killed my attention span too, so a whole lot of good that does. Wow. This- Jesus. It's not- It's not a bad combination of Galaga and Centipede. Like, if you had asked me to, uh, design a combination of Galaga and Centipede... Mmm... Well, how would I have designed it? So, hmm. Well, okay, let's keep playing. Because there's no point in commentary if there's no video games, am I right? Um. So one thing that's interesting is they, they pretty much took Centipede as a base and then, like, added, like, literally composited on top of a little bit of Galaga. So, like, you're playing Centipede, but, like, every now and again, then you play, like, a little uh, Galaga in the background. Which is kind of interesting as a concept, and it works, and it's like familiar, but what I think I would have done is somehow have made the Galaga enemies come at you, but then leave the mushrooms behind. Now I realize that's like kind of ill-formed and not really something you can work with. Hmm, I wonder if they could make like barriers as they go and then that kind of like reduces your uh, play area, and then you can't really move around so much. Be well, but it's not like Galaga, your your problem was that you could move around too much. Because the thing about Galaga is like, eventually you just get overwhelmed, and that's kind of where the real difficulty lies. I mean, you also have to make sure you don't make like obvious mistakes, but like, usually that's not a problem. It's it, The most dangerous time is when they swoop in at you and shoot a few missiles. Because then, all of a sudden, like, you get three guys swarming at you, two missiles apiece or whatever, that's six places you absolutely do not want to be. And the worst part is when those six places overlap. Oh yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they did do Galaga, but they didn't, like, do the missiles from Galaga. So, even though these Galaga enemies are coming at you, it's, it's sort of like a challenging stage. It's not really a challenging stage, it's kind of like stage two or three when the uh, the enemies in the beginning when they kind of come at you but they don't actually shoot at you so it's sort of just free range uh yeah that's kind of weirdly merciful because i mean one whole thing oh okay so you can this centipede does run into you it's just kind of weird to make like a centipede clone but not make it brutally difficult because i feel like that was more than the centipede itself, almost. That was a distinguishing feature of centipede. So to have it be so... easy? Mm, I don't know that easy is necessarily the word I want to go for. Maybe approachable? Possible? Doable? Oh, that looks like a crab. Oh yeah, I think I br briefly remarked. Um, the en there is pretty good like variation in enemies here. I mean, the centipede looks the same every darn time. And I mean, come on, even Centipede learned that you had to recolor the Centipede. But the invaders you come at you, they are fairly different each time. Well, okay, maybe we've seen the extent of the variability. But like, there's there's a fair bit of sprites, and they're not just palette swaps of each other either. I mean, that's not taking, that's taking like a fair amount of memory. Easy peasy, this game is so easy. Jeez. Okay. Okay, so it probably was the mushrooms that were made that were killing me. That I couldn't really see. Hmm. That is, that is weird though, like, they make the mushrooms and they kind of cut off your mobility. And then that kind of impacts the Galaga thing. Well, I can't really call this a clone, this is more like a fusion. So... Huh. That was a Mago. A fusion of Galaga and Centipede. That's obviously not the tagline, but I mean, it may as well be. I'll be honest, at the very beginning when I thought it was just Centipede by any other name, I was a bit down on it. But now that I've kind of played it, kind of got to know it, kind of see what it has, what it's brought to the table. 1984. I've, I've kind of warmed up to it. Like, I kind of like this, actually. 
I certainly like this more than Centipede, which is just downright impossible. And I don't like it more than Galaga, which is argue well, it is arguably the best shoot 'em up before shoot 'em ups really got started. Huh. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's it's kind of weird to think, but sometimes you, you combine two things and it becomes just as good as the average of the two things. And like maybe that doesn't sound immediately appealing, but when one of those things is Galaga, which is amazing, then maybe maybe making a very good game is is all you need. Although man, that'd be that'd be pretty funny. It's like you you go to your local bowling alley and like all they have is Imago and you play you play and you play Centipede and you're like, "What is this crap?" And then you start telling people that Centipede is a copy of Imago and then you realize that no one else has played this game. Can you imagine an alternate universe where that was true? Actually, I hear rumor is that um for the Super Bowl, they print out t-shirts for both teams. And then when one team wins, then they ship all the losers. Well, okay, both shirts say, like, congratulations for winning and variations of that. And so when the one team wins, then they ship all the losing teams, oh, you won, apparel, off to, like, Africa or something. And so it's like, just think, in Africa, there's a whole other alternate parallel universe where, like, the Patriots suck and you've got a whole bunch of other teams that just, just history is different. And so to some kid... There's an alternate universe where Imago is what they grew up with, and Centipede was the pale imitation. Food for thought. And on that note, this cat's gotta scat.